Hey guys, and welcome to another PyQt tutorial. So in today's video, we're just going to be talking about menu bars. Now, menu bars are the things that you see usually in the top left-hand corner of your screen, uh, or the top bar, whatever you want to call it. It says like file, edit, form, view. So how to set those up, how to trigger uh, different functions with them and methods like we did before with regular buttons. And then how to set some stuff like the status tip, uh, the icon, uh, shortcuts for them, you know, all that fun stuff. So I'm just going to go in Qt Design, and we're going to be working in here, and what we're going to do is create the GUI, um, export it to code, and then kind of look at how the code works. So I'm just going to go and create a new main window here, um, and inside of here, what I'm going to do is start by just adding a really basic label, which is what we're going to use when we want to show like what button we press, just as an example of how you can do certain things. So I'm going to set the font size a little bit bigger here, just to see it nicely, so we'll go 20. Uh, actually, you know what, let's, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 36. Why not? Okay. And I'll leave that as label. We don't need to do anything more with that. So whenever we're creating the file menu, all we have to do really is just go where it says type here and just start typing and creating our file menu. It's pretty intuitive. So I'm going to say file is my first one and edit as my next one. And you can see that it um, kind of brings this thing down and says type here. This will allow you to add all the sub menus. So in this case, or sub buttons, whatever you want to call them. So in this case, I'm just going to create new um, as one of them and save. And we're just using these as examples. Uh, it doesn't really have to make sense. And under edit, I'm going to do copy and I'm going to do paste. Now, if you wanted to add another menu to these copy and paste buttons or like cascade it down, um, you can just click on this plus button here and you see where it says like type here, you can add another sub menu or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can see all the buttons there as well and do the same thing that I'm about to show you with those buttons. So let's go ahead and just start by setting up a few things for this new button under file. So the first thing I want to do is have a look at this name here. So it's called action name. This is how I'm actually going to reference it in the program. So I want to make sure that's okay. Uh, action new is fine. We'll leave that. Um, and what I'm going to do now is set a shortcut for this, which is a keyboard shortcut. So the keyboard shortcut that I set will allow me to just hit like, for example, control S or control N or whatever I set it. And that will trigger the like press of that button in the program so that all you have to do if you want to save something is, you know, hit control S like you might do in this program. Right? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and say for new, it's going to be control N. We'll save that here. And the next thing I'm going to add is the status tip. Now the status, uh, the status tip is what's going to show up in the status bar and the status bar is in the bottom left hand corner of your uh, application. So down here where my mouse is right where OpenGL widget is so right below that is the status bar. And you see if I go to like form and layout horizontally, you can see that it shows uh, lays out the selected widget horizontally. So we're going to create what text we want to show up in that status bar when we hover over that new button. So in this case, I'm just going to say create a new file, just some random stuff so that it kind of makes sense. Um, and we can see it when it goes there. So the next one is save. So for save, I'm going to set that shortcut uh, to be control S and the status tip is going to be save a file. And then we'll do the same thing for edit. Uh, so for copy, we're going to say status tip will be copy a file. And the shortcut will be control C. And then for paste, we will have control V and we'll have the status tip as paste a file. Why not? Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to save this and I'll just save this as test.ui and I'm going to save that to, uh, where is it? PyQt tutorial. So we'll go ahead and click yes. Make sure you know where you save this file, obviously, because now we're going to export it to code and start actually working with it. So what I'm going to do now is go to my command prompt and you can see I've already actually used this command twice. Uh, what I'm going to do is CD into the directory where my thing is. I showed this in the last video. So in this case it's in PyQt tutorial and I'm going to run the command pyuic5 hyphen x in this case test.ui that's the name of the file I just saved and then dot o which stands for output file which in this case is going to be tutorial 4py so let's run that, hit enter, give it a second to go. And now if I go into subline text and I open up tutorial four, I think I need to reopen it because I overwrote it. Um, then you can see that we've created this, this file thing, whatever it is um, in code. So let's run this and just make sure everything looks all right here. And there we go. We get text label. We have file, new, save. We have edit, copy, and paste. Now, apparently my shortcuts for save and for 
paste didn't work, but that's fine. I'll actually show you how we can set those from code. So let's quickly run through this code, understand how it works, and then we'll add um, some methods here that we can call and change the label based on when we press one of those buttons. So let's go here and let's have a look. So up here, we're just kind of setting up the central window, um, setting up the size. We already know how that works. Now here we're actually setting up a font object uh, and that way we're going to set the font size to be 36 for our label. You can kind of see how that works. I'll spread this out here. Uh, main window dot set central widget. That's just going to be what's in the middle is obviously central widget, which is, you know, the main window here. Um, now menu bar is going to be the, obviously that file menu bar at the top. You can see that we're setting the two things here. So menu file menu edit, uh, and then we go ahead and change those names as well. Now, what we do here when we set the shortcuts, I believe it is here that we do this. So what we want to do is actually um, add some other shortcuts to this. So the way that we can do that is just using set shortcut. Um, so apparently ours like didn't work for two of them. I guess maybe I didn't save it properly. So what we'll do is we will, um, if I can find which ones didn't work, which was it paste that didn't work um, and save. So for save, if we want to set a shortcut, what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this action copy here, go to save. So where is that? Go right underneath and we'll just translate that shortcut. So in this case, we'll do main window. We're going to change this from action copy to action save. Um, so it'd be like this. And then instead of control C, it is going to be control S like that. So we'll use that one. And now same thing for the other one that we need a shortcut for, which I believe was paste. So down here, we're going to set change this instead of action copy to be action paste. And we'll make this control V. So now those shortcuts are set up. If I run this now, we have control S and we have control V. So everything is working perfectly. All right. So next step is to make sure that we actually set up these buttons so that they do something when we press them. So the first part to do that, and we've already kind of gone through this procedure, so I'm just kind of speeding through it, is I'm going to create a method that is going to be called whenever we press one of those buttons. So in this case, I'm just going to call it clicked, but I'm going to do something differently here. And we're going to talk about how this works in just one second. So inside of here, I'm actually going to take another argument rather than just self that is text. And what I'm going to do is just update the label. So I'm going to say self dot label dot set text. Again, this is just how we change that label text. We've already been over this and I'm going to set it to be equal to whatever is passed in as text. Now, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the size of my label. So self dot label dot adjust size uh, just to make sure that, you know, it resizes appropriately. All right. So now time to actually link up these buttons uh, to our, you know, clicked event here. So to do that is similar to what we did with the other buttons, except it's just one different word. And you'll see that in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say self dot in this case, we want to start with new. So action new. So self dot action new dot in this case triggered, which is different than clicked that we had before and triggered essentially just means pressed. The reason it's called triggered is because you can trigger it using the shortcut as well. And then what we're going to do is dot connect. And we're going to say uh, this method here. So self dot clicked. But the way we're going to do this is using something called a Lambda. Um, a Lambda is actually just like a, it's called like a mini function. Um, I'll try to explain kind of how this works, but I'm going to do Lambda. And then in here, I'm going to say self dot clicked. And I'm going to actually pass the argument text. Now, text is going to be whatever I want the label to change to. So if you click new, I'm just going to say like new was clicked. Now I'm going to copy this four times, then I'm going to explain what Lambda is. So we're going to change instead of action new, we're going to have action, save, we're going to have action, copy and action paste. And then instead of new was clicked, we'll do all these other ones. So save, go copy like this, and we will go paste. All right, so let's run this quickly and then I'll explain kind of that other stuff. So if I go file new, you can see new is clicked. I go file, save, save was clicked, edit, copy and paste, paste was clicked. There you go. That is working. Now, the reason I've done, I've done it this way is so that I didn't have to create four methods that each uh, updated the label to be a different thing. Because with our previous knowledge, 
all we knew how to do here was just put like self dot clicked and we didn't even put the brackets, right? We just put the name of the method. Now that's fine. But the thing is, if you want the method to work for a bunch of different objects, uh, which we do in this case, well, what I need to do is give it some kind of argument. So it's different based on those objects. But previously, we didn't know how to pass the argument. So the way that this works is this um, self dot action dot trigger dot connect, it takes as its argument, one function. So before what we were giving was clicked, and that was the function. Now, in this case, what we're actually giving it is a function. And this is what Lambda stands for. It stands for a function that's defined on one line. And that function actually calls another function called self dot clicked, but is able to pass it a parameter because before we couldn't pass that parameter. Uh, but now since we're saying let's call a function that calls another function and pass the parameter that actually works fine. I know it's a little bit confusing. You don't have to really understand this to get why this works. But if you ever want to pass information to the uh, the clicked, you know, method or trigger, whatever it is, then that's the way you do it. So anyways, that is kind of it for the menu bar. You can see if I hit my shortcuts like control N, control V, um, control C, those are all working as well. And with that being said, I will see you guys in another video.